Today's video lesson is on a loaded topic, if there ever was one, and that is feel. Many people, when they talk about their favorite guitar players, talk about how player X has great feel. Whether you're talking about Eric Clapton or Eddie Van Halen or more modern players, that's a common bit of praise is that this guitar player has great feel. I don't think of feel as one skill that a guitarist has, like you can have great technique and, or great feel. Great feel on your instrument, I feel comes from a lot of smaller skills used cohesively together. So today, we're gonna take a look at these skills and how you can use them in your own playing. The first technique I'm gonna get into today is vibrato. This video is not a in-depth tutorial on how to use a vibrato technique. What I'm looking at more is the application of vibrato. I often see electric guitar students, and it's understandable because when you're, when you're getting into new techniques, there's so many different things going on. I often see electric guitar students not using vibrato enough. Example one here is gonna be based on the E minor pentatonic scale. In this example, I'm gonna use more of a subtle vibrato just to demonstrate that you don't have to be Zach Wilde to apply vibrato to your licks and make it sound good. Let's check it out. Okay, so here's example one. Um, based on the E minor pentatonic scale, I do throw in one extra note, natural sixth, uh, and that note gives us kind of the sound of the Dorian mode. I'm playing 15 on the B string and then going to 17 on the B string. 17 is where the vibrato is applied. 17 on the B, 16 on the G, 15 on the B, 17 on the B, and then 14 on the B. I'm dwelling on that note and it's gonna get some vibrato. And again, it's okay if your vibrato is very, very subtle. What sounds better, this? Or this? It's subtle, but it's noticeable. Second half of the lick, I wanted to throw in two notes back to back with vibrato to really underscore the point. What I'm playing is 14, 12, 14 on the G string. There's vibrato on that 14. I start this by playing the 14th fret of the D string twice. Then it's the 12th fret of the G string. And then, and that note is getting vibrato, the 12th fret of the G string. And then I finish off on the 14th fret of the, of the D string. So that's that one. The next element of feel that I'm gonna be talking about today is that of timing. Timing is one of the most overlooked skills for electric guitar players ever. Timing might be the most important skill when it comes to giving this aura of great feel within your electric guitar improvising. What I'm gonna be doing in this upcoming example is playing a pentatonic based guitar lick using some expressive techniques and I am going to start off the lick on kind of an odd part of the beat. I think you'll see what I, what I mean, but it's gonna be basically based on 16th note subdivisions, and I'm gonna play a lick that starts off on kind of a funny part of the beat. I'm gonna describe it more in detail. When you're able to demonstrate that you can throw this in when improvising, it just gives that feel that we're talking about. Let's check this one out. Okay, example two, getting into the timing. So what this is, is one E and ah, on that ah of the beat, that's when this lick is starting. So that's kind of one sneaky timing element. And you have this, you have this, this, and what it really is, is one E and a two. One E and a two. So those quick notes, and that's 14 on the G, and then followed by 12 on the G. The rest of the, of the first half of the lick is relatively simple. It's just 14, 12, 14 on the D string and then three quick, three quick 16th notes on the G string. 12 and 14, which I'm playing with my index and ring. Then I, I kind of 
slide up to that 16th fret. We have a short phrase. And what it is is that first note, the 15th fret of the B string, is starting on the E. So it's like one E and a. Uh. It kind of sounds like it's just starting a split second late, but it's not late in like a weird, awkward way. It, it has kind of an unexpected sort of phrase. And that's gonna, and just even without a metronome, just saying that out loud and counting and playing is helping to tune you up to the rhythm and you'll get better at playing stuff like these and you'll be able to create licks like this too. One more time. 15 on the B, 17 on the B, 15 on the G, 17 on the B, 15 on the B, 16 on the G, 15 on the B, 16 on the G, 14 on the G, 16 on the G, 12 on the G, little pause, finish on 14 on the D. All right. Another big part of demonstrating feel to your audience, I think comes from how you move along the fretboard. Novice guitar players tend to play in a very box pattern type of way. Moving left to right opens up many more expressive techniques than going up or down. Really what you find when you listen to electric guitar players, pretty much regardless of what style they play, whether it's rock, blues, jazz, you know, or heavy, you know, heavier metal styles, um, they're not, unless in the case of some heavier guitarists, they might do it from time to time, they might do a fast run going up a scale, but if, if they're playing in an expressive way, Odds are they're not really gonna be going up and down these box patterns. Really, when you know your fretboard well, you're likely, assuming you want to play in a expressive manner, you're gonna be moving a lot more laterally. Moving left to right, there's much more you can do in terms of string bends, legato, slides, things like that. Here's a quick lick where I use some string bends and position shifts and lots of lateral movement to get a nice sound. Check it out. laterally across the fretboard. Now to start this off, I'm bending on the 15th fret of the second string. So we hear the string go up and go down. Now next, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and pivot my whole hand over. I'm doing a similar descending idea as a previous lick where I'm gonna go 10, 12, 8, 10. That's all on the B string. 10, 12, 8, 10. And this is just, this descending motion here, this is just a pentatonic sequence that you can, you can use in your own playing too. I'm going 10, 12, 8, 10, 9 on the G string, so now I've crossed over to a new string, 9 on the G string, and then back to 8 on the B string. And then I play 9, 7 on the G string. That, those last two notes, the nine and seven frets on the G string, we would have played those with our ring and index finger. I wouldn't suggest, I wouldn't suggest going middle finger on the ninth fret of the G string. It's just, it just kind of puts your hand in a little bit of an awkward spot. Then I do another la like big lateral move. I shift all the, my whole hand jumps down two frets. My index finger was taking the seventh fret, but I'm actually gonna hop over my ring finger is on seven. My middle and index finger are stacked up on the frets behind it, the sixth and fifth frets. And I'm doing a bend. I'm bending the seventh fret of the G string up a whole step, back down, hitting the fourth fret of the G string. The ending there. That's just when I complete this bend sequence after making this big lateral jump here. I'm going seven, five on the D string, seven, five on the A string, and then seven on the A string, five on the D string, and seven on the A string. So that's five on the A, seven on the A, five on the D, seven on the A. The last segment of today's video, I'm gonna give two really simple expressive dynamic tools in your toolbox that you can use. Specifically, they are staccato 
and grace notes. Staccato is just playing a note in a way that's choppy. A couple ways that you can achieve it. You can do it by muting the string with your pick, like picking a note and then just tapping your pick to the string. You can also do it by picking a note and then releasing the note right away with your left hand. Grace notes require a little bit more speed and technique. The way I'm gonna be using them in an electric guitar phrasing context is I'm just gonna do them as hammer-ons for today. Just keep things simple. So a grace note is basically a note that has no rhythmic significance. Say I play the seventh fret of the fourth string and I just decide to sort of spice it up a little bit. I'm gonna play the fifth and seventh frets of the, of the fourth string. That's in a nutshell how grace notes work. Say in a solo I'm playing the seventh fret of the fourth string. If I was to add a grace note before that, I'm just gonna go with the fifth fret of the fourth string. So it's basically gonna be, I'm gonna pick and do a quick hammer on. So really the note I'm hearing is the seventh fret of the fourth string. But just because I do that, I do that quick hammer on starting from the fourth fret, there's like that little blip in the solo. And it's, it's subtle. So here's the note with no grace note, just the seventh fret. Here's that same note with a grace note preceding it on the fifth fret. Remember, these little techniques all add up. If you're able to compute juggling all these skills and using them adequately and effectively in your solos, you're gonna sound great. Example four, getting into the grace notes and staccato. What I'm doing to start is I'm picking 15 on the high E and there's a quick, the 15 is really serving as a great note, grace note because I pick 15 and hammer on to 17 straight away. Because as soon as I hit that 17, I am just kind of letting the note end. So after that, that 15 is just a blip. I literally pick it. Then I hit the 17 fret on the B and that's another staccato note. Both of these staccato notes, I'm controlling it by like as soon as I uh, play the note and I want and I want the note to cancel out, I just lift my my fretting finger. It's still resting on the string, but it's just it's not pressing the string against the fretboard. So when I do this, it's a little tough to see. Um, I'm gonna have GoPro double camera footage. Uh, coming very, very soon. So unfortunately don't have that today, but it's like you, you play it and what it is, I'm kind of using my picking hand to keep the other strings quiet during this. So I'm not getting a bunch of buzzing and noise. To finish off this run of staccato and grace notes, I'm doing another staccato pick on the 15th fret of the high E, then another staccato pick on the 17th fret of the B, and then from there, I'm gonna do a similar grace note approach, but on the B string, I'm gonna pick 15 on the B string, and right away hammer on to 17 on the B string. So we have another grace note and staccato moment where I pick 15 on the B string and hammer on to 17 on the G string. To get that sound, after I finish the grace note and staccato that is previously mentioned just from the 15th fret of the B to the 17th fret of the B, I'm gonna hit the 16th fret of the G, 15th fret of the B, and then I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do kind of a two step. I'm gonna go 14, 16, 12, 14. Both of those are on the G string. That motion continues where I hit, where I now kind of, my ring finger rolls over because my ring finger just hit the 14th fret of the G string. I want to hit the 14th fret of the D string, the fourth string next. And by doing that, I just roll the ring finger over to get that. And then my pointer finger nabs that 12th fret of the third string. I then play 1412 on the G string. And what that is is my pointer finger is pressing down the 12th frets of the fourth and third strings, like a bar. Sneakily applied grace note here. I'm doing a grace note, but I'm combining it with a double stop. Take care that you're barring to get the strings to ring out cleanly. It takes a little bit of jimmying 
but your ring finger just needs to arch just enough so you get that hammer on onto the 14th fret of the D string without accidentally sort of clipping the, the G string and killing that string there. After executing the grace note, you just lift your ring finger off and strike the strings again. And then to finish off, I'm going 15 on the A string, 12 on the A string, 10 on the A string. I'm doing a little saucy, just a little micro bend. I'm just pulling it towards the floor ever so slightly. And then finishing on, finishing on the 12th fret of the low E string. Okay, well that about does it for today. Thanks for tuning in. Remember to Remember to like this video if you don't mind and subscribe to this channel. We're just building Electric Guitar Academy up right now. I hope I've helped you think about your playing in a different way and maybe add a little bit of dynamics and nuance to what you do. Feel free to let me know how you felt about this video. Any feedback, positive or negative, is welcome. Um, stay tuned. Much more of this coming your way. And, and if you like, Give Electric Guitar Academy a follow on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Stay tuned, lots more coming your way. Cheers.